Before we begin, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, ZenThreadShop.com. This amazing website not only has great apparel, bath products, jewelry, and more, but they also donate a portion of their net proceeds to Beyond Giving, a 501c3 organization that currently provides funding to create and staff a nonprofit training center at which the underserved will acquire the entrepreneurial skills uh, they need to become self-sufficient. By entering the code ZTSROOM6 at checkout, you'll not only be helping the community, but saving 20% off your order too. It's a win-win all around. Thanks Zen Thread Shop for being a sponsor, and thank you for watching. Now, on to the show. Yeah, it's sitting at the piano sometimes is, is a different muse than just holding your guitar and just being like, well, now what do I do? Mm -hmm. um, cool, so you... <laughs> I was getting to it. If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, it's Super Bowl Sunday, I'm rooting for the Niners, and this lovely young lady apparently is also a Niners fan, yay! Um, please welcome to the show, Ruth Ann Sharp. Hey everybody, how's it going? Yay! So, uh, first of all, go Niners. Hey. Second of all, <laughs> now that every, all the uh, Niner fan haters are, are, are gone, um, we this this will, might be a streamlined interview because uh, the game's coming. So, first things first, thank you for coming to my show. Oh, you're so welcome. I know we've been trying to schedule this for quite a while, so. Yep, definitely. <laughs> um, I would toast, but it's water. It's water. We can say it's water. It's okay. the ultimate beverage. There you go. We just want them like, say, uh, same thing about the game. <laughs> no, we'll just leave that for later. Yes. <clears throat> so the superb owl. Uh, I heard uh, on somebody wouldn't couldn't they they weren't allowed to say Super Bowl means whatever. Um, how long have you been in Vegas? I've been here for almost sixteen years. Right on. Yeah. So uh, you gotta ask where you moved from. Uh, from Utah. Utah. Mm -hmm. Where is this Utah anyway? Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been performing as yourself? As myself, um, uh, well, let's see. I'd like to think I've been performing my entire life, but okay. uh, I mean, I, I loved music early, but I didn't know that I had any talent in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just kind of do things, and it just happens that way. But I mean, as like a solo artist, I guess you would say it's been, oh gosh, almost twenty years. Okay, twenty, twenty-one years. So early on, you said I'm, I'm going to be with that shark. I'm not going to join a band and then with their band name or any of that stuff. Yeah, well, I, I started off with, uh, in high school, doing musicals and things and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I didn't start learning guitar until I was 19 in college. Okay. For, so. Yeah, for me, it was uh, 18, yeah. Yeah. So I, I had done a little bit of piano, but the piano is not anything you can really take with you. Yeah. So now you can, but, you yeah. know, back then it was, they were heavy and. It was hard. It was a hard thing to do. So I decided, hey, I was going to take some college courses and play some guitar and, and try it out. I right. wasn't really agreeing with the piano very much, so let's try something. That's funny, actually. Yeah. One of my very first uh, college courses at a community college, getting like a lot of my courses, by the way, was intro to guitar. I learned uh, "Stairway to Heaven." <laughs> that was one of them. Yes, that was one of them. I also, I I also learned from a student, "Wanted Dead or Alive." <laughs> like there, there you go. What yeah. more do you need? Um, how long have you? Been well. We answered how long you've been doing music itself. So um, basically, from a, from a very young age, mm -hmm. you currently do have a band that you play with, right? Uh, I have a duo that I I perform covers with. Most of my original stuff is just me. I okay. mean, it's been that way for as long as I can remember. That's just how I've always done it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I like having the duo. It's it's a lot of fun. Cover music is not always my favorite, but I. You got to make a living, right? Yeah, so needs must. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of the bands I've had on here, uh, Crimson Riot, they, they're a punk band, but their day job is Roxy Gun Project, which you may have heard of. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of so they're like, yeah, that's our day job. 
doing the covers for the tourists and stuff. Mm -hmm. But what they really love doing is is the punk, and it's um, I I had that for a little while. I was a uh, fronting an indie rock band, mm -hmm. but I was trying to do the solo acoustic, you know, playing, and and I just I, I don't I didn't like it personally. It didn't jive with my life. So now I do this. There you go. Um, let's talk musical influences. So early on, what was the music that got you thinking, hey, I want to do that? Or... Oh, I always wanted to be a rock star. And the second I heard um, If Looks Could Kill, Heart, oh, nice. like, I was sold. Every time, every Halloween, what do you want to be? I'm a rock star. That's what I wanted to do. Well, I wanted jacket. to sing like Anne, and I wanted to play guitar like Nancy. And... Doesn't anybody? <laughs> right? It's like, so let's, let's try that. Yeah. Right on. So that was the earliest, I think. So, okay. Um, what's currently your, what's, what's rocking you now? Oh my gosh. I love Muse. Oh, I, I love Muse. Love, oh, I just, I just do. I just love that they've combined the classical influences in with all of the electronica. And mm -hmm. I it, just, just when you think you, you've got a beat on what they're going to do next. Right. There's another direction. Uh, are you a Doctor Who fan at all? Yes. So you know the intro. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, don't sue me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Muse song, um, of course I'm blanking on the name now, it's, um, Paranoia is in blue. Oh yes, I was just listening to that this morning, and now I can't remember the name that, of it. I always thought, that's, that should be the beginning of Doctor Who. Well, It'd certainly should, if they, yeah, if they were going to revamp that, that would be the, the yep. song. Uh, cool. So, so Muse, it's still rock and roll. Yeah. Still, mm -hmm. still liking that stuff. Any, uh, any other weird influences coming in? Mm -hmm. Not a bit different. What's her name? Uh, Randy Carlisle. I listen to her okay. quite a bit. I love her songwriting. Um, a lot of my own stuff comes out as very contemporary folk. Yeah. So I've listened to so much stuff. Yeah. And I was also was like, I don't know if I want to call it folk folk, mm -hmm. but it's not country necessarily. Yeah. So my own little hybrid somewhere in between there, between Utah and Las Vegas, is what I like. You sound like Ruth Asher. Cool. So uh, from from. Uh, Contemporary musical influences. The card. <laughs> Let's talk shows. Yeah. Okay. What is? Do you have a favorite show memory? Could be good. Could be bad. Could be good. Something huh? that stands out is just of one of my own, or like what? Yeah, one, one of your one own. of my own. Um, well, let's see. Some of my favorite ones were when I first began in Cedar City. They actually had a really awesome original music scene. We had done this show in the park, and there was a giant thunderstorm. I mean, it was brutal. There was thunder, Always lightning, fun for a live show. and literally you had like this space mm -hmm. to stand in with your guitar. And they said, "Hey, just don't touch anything metal, and you'll be fine." Yeah. So terrifying, but the most incredible show I've ever done because it, literally you're playing a song and like the thunder would crack at the exact right time. Oh, jeez, your Garth Brooks. Yeah, so <laughs> I was like, rolls. I was like, this is this is what it's like to be a musician. And, that is, that is, that's actually awesome. I haven't had that yet. I haven't had the thing where, or maybe you're, you're on stage and covered, but the band, mm -hmm. the audience is, is so, mm -hmm. but they're still there. I haven't had that. And, and, the, but uh, I have had the, um, moist environment and, and been shocked on a microphone. And yeah. It hurts. It hurts a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's really cool. Um, from, from favorite show memory to favorite venue, is there a, it, it doesn't even have to be one you played at. Mm -hmm. Is there a venue that, what's your, what's your favorite venue that you think of? It doesn't even have to be in Vegas. Uh, again, I'd have to say Utah. Uh, they used to have this summer music festival that uh, Gravacious, the record store, put on there. Okay. Um, that where where I started, and they would pack, you know, five to ten thousand people in this park. Jeez. And it was I, just incredible, incredible people, incredible place. It just. We don't really have a, a park big enough for that here. Yeah. We have tons of parks. Yeah. Uh, Henderson actually has the highest per capita uh, parks in, in the country, I believe. But um, yeah, closest I've got is, a, is a, for that be playing thousand people at a high school, mm -hmm. but it was just all students. So, oh, I mean that, that could have been one of the the worst ones too. But I did hit some guy with a pick, right? Nice smack in the forehead. It was just it was <laughs> that's sick. a rock star thing, though. Yeah, I mean, what are you what are you supposed to do? You yeah. know? Okay, all right. Um, Sorry, you've been to House of Blues? Oh yeah, downstairs. Somebody was playing. Somebody's been on the show. Somebody's playing. He's a bass player, and he broke, and he flipped it out into the crowd. Somebody was sitting at the tables on the far end of the floor mm -hmm. and landed in his drink. Just That's happened to be good. his buddy. He's like, hey, man, is this yours? <laughs> I found something. It might be yeah. this. Jeez. Um, so from favorite venue, mm -hmm. is there a dream show you'd like to play or, or a tour you'd be like part, part of? Or... 
I would like to actually go on a tour. You know, that's something I've never actually done. Ditto. You know, I've never actually like gone out mm-hmm. and played just all of these different venues. I would love to do that. That's some, that's one of my goals. Yeah. It, life gets in the way sometimes, though. Yes. Yeah. Most well, certainly. If you're young and hungry and, and living in your car, do it now. <laughs> um, speaking of life getting in the way, uh, you've got you've got family. You've got children. Yeah. Yep. How many? I have two. I have a little boy. He's nine. Oh. Kobe. And I have a little girl. She's six. Samara. Yes, yeah, so I've got a 12-year-old daughter who's upstairs right now being browbeaten by her mother to uh, finish her science fair project. <laughs> well, that's what we do. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, that's what I was doing before you got here. <laughs> but yeah, it's it changes once a, a, a little one comes along. Mm-hmm. You suddenly realize, you know, I'm not at the point where I can just take them with me or, or leave. leave mm-hmm. you know, so. um, and it's I, I'm happy, though, that you're still managing to get out and do it. You haven't yeah. you haven't let that crush your, your your dream, so to speak. Well, I mean, you you hear a lot of uh, people say, "Hey, isn't it hard to for you to get out there and do this? Don't you miss your family? Aren't you worried you're missing out on something?" No, because I would miss out on my dreams more. I mean, would you right. rather have your dreams die and have a mother that lives without passion, or would you mm-hmm. rather have a mother that is completely fulfilled that actually is teaching her children, "Hey, go out there." Be who you are. Exactly. And, and if it's an all ages kind of thing, they can come see you mm-hmm. and say, that's my mom. Uh, when I was in the indie rock band, my kid didn't really get a lot of opportunity to see that. You know, So uh, I, I do, that is one regret I have from my, my mm-hmm. days of you know playing around town of just, she never got to see me do it except, if, no, here's a video. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the same. Um, we are really cranking through this, by the way. We're on the last card already. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be so fast. But... Um, I'm efficient. Yes, very much. Very much so. Poop on. Uh, let's talk gear. Yeah. What are you currently rocking right now? What are you using? Uh, so I have my Taylor, mm-hmm. which I love. My acoustic baby. Her name is Moneymaker. I bought her because nice. <laughs> we wanted to shake it and we wanted to make some money together. That was kind of the last puzzle piece for my music career is I'd, I'd like to actually make a little bit of cash doing what I love. Details, details. Yeah. So, T- ditto. There you go. There you go. Links are in the description. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So that's, I love my, my tailor. Um, I've got, uh, I like my Line 6 gear. I do. I like my, my HD500X pedal board. When you perform, it's generally acoustic? Generally, yeah. I mean, I, I've been in, in some bands where I've done some electric, and sometimes I moonlight in there a little bit of something, but right now, it's acoustic. It's, okay. uh, I've got I've got a Roland um, X8 at home that I love to play around with in the studio and a lot of my new stuff is very piano based which is interesting to me because I've done oh. a lot of guitar stuff okay. and then all of a sudden you start to sit down and write and things just pour out of you those are just sometimes I haven't so sometimes yeah it's sitting at the piano sometimes is, is a different muse than just holding your guitar and just being like well now what do I do mm-hmm. um cool so you <laughs> I was getting to it We, we, we need a break? We have a squirrel here. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Squirrel. Squirrel! We're back. So before we were interrupted by flying squirrels, uh, they you're rocking a tailor. Uh, do you know the model by any chance? 330? Okay. 230, 330. And uh, you use the, the Line 6, which you don't hear a lot of people saying acoustically. I, you know, I use the Line 6 pedal. Um, what do you generally use it for? They have a really great acoustic modeling sample. I mean, yeah. it, it really does just give, a, a, as you're plugged in, it gives you just a little bit more of that feel that I miss. You okay. know, when I'm I'm there in the studio and you get to hear that you're recording um, the acoustic guitar, I miss that in a live setting. So this allows me to have that. Okay. It also, uh, playing through, you know, so speakers that aren't yours necessarily, mm-hmm. it lets you control the sound a little bit better. Absolutely, which I love. Because yes. I mean, if I need to... I can plug in a microphone into my pedal board as well as my guitar, and I can just be like, hey, here's my outs. Don't mess with my sound. So, that, yeah. smart, smart thinking. Um, what, any partic- do you use any particular strings or picks? Um, or just whatever you find you like. <laughs> gosh. What are they called? Why, why am I blanking what they're called now? Um, That's elixirs. Elixirs, there you go. Why? I'm like nano web. That's all that was going through my head was nano web. Yeah. Nano web elixir strings. That's what I. Prefer. I think I've got elixirs on my two acoustics upstairs. At least one of them. In a custom light. That's what I like. Oh, okay. Um, and that's 
because of the style of your playing, mm-hmm. it, that's fine. If you were doing harder, harder strumming kind of stuff, they'd probably be breaking all the time. Yes. I'm generally more of a me- medium to light, um, but I, I just, whatever, I, I pick, I find them on the floor all the time. You know, I, I have a collection from the, the years of performing mm-hmm. where you're just like, oh, there's another pick. Um, and let's see here. Cover that, cover that, cover that. Microphone. Uh, I usually have gone with uh, with a Shure, but I've recently switched to Sennheiser, which I'm actually kind of really liking. Okay. It's very smooth. I have yet to have one. I, I know I've sung through one, but I can't remember where. Um, but the uh, the Shure would be, what, like a 58? Yes. Okay. That's what I've had for years, and I had that microphone since I started. Yeah, that's and pretty was, much everybody's yeah. first, like, real vocal mic. And, and, yeah. yeah. I've got an, um, an EDO, Electro Voice. I don't know the model. But it was a, it was a gift uh, from a drummer at the time, and it's like here, man, here's a real mic, and, and it really it is, it's a uh, a more live mic, mm-hmm. you know. So it definitely boosts me a little bit, but um, that's my go to. But I uh, would love a synthesizer. But squirrels are expensive to feed, so <laughs> yes, yes, they are. <laughs> All right, let's move to um, dream gear. Dream gear. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, I I. Would love to have a giant recording studio. Well, so as to dream gear, like all of it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all of the gear, like all of it. Like, all of the gear. Walk into a guitar yes. center and just be like, yes. "I'll take it." <laughs> Actually, I probably have enough gear. I just need a bigger space. I think. Yeah. Oh, same with me and YouTube. I would love to have an actual bigger space. Mm-hmm. As much as I like having people in the kitchen, you know, it's comfy for me. Um, there are times where I would like to mm-hmm. ramp up my production value. And to help me with that, if you would like to see the quality of the videos go up on this channel, there's a Patreon link down in my description, or hey, buy one of my CDs. Um, it, it, any money I get off this goes strictly to the channel or to the musicians who have been on the show. And, and when there is money, I plan on putting on showcases of guests who have been on before mm-hmm. and paying them. Like, yeah, hey, that's... you know, come come to a party, I'll pay you, it'll be food and drink, and and you get to perform for people who haven't heard you before because they're here. You know, it's a, it's a gig. But I want to have more of a, um, a a smoother type of thing where have a have a have a venue with a big stage. Everybody's gears on stage are ready, mm-hmm. ideally. And maybe the drummers are, are you know, if, if they can, if they're okay, maybe sharing kits or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's just a real quick turn, and everybody can can get in and out. Um, that's that's the goal. Now, on, on my Patreon page is. You know, better gear or paying for, you know, a showcase for you, the fans. So, spread the word. Also, don't forget to subscribe down there. Um, from the highs of dream gear, mm-hmm. all of it, to the lows of lost gear. Have you ever lost any gear? You know, I I really, other than just a few little things, I kind of, I keep it real close. The, those yeah. are my babies. Like, that's, that's. Mm-hmm. That would be a sad thing. I hear stories of people that it's been stolen or... I mean, I've broken some things that have kind of broken my heart, oh. but, you know, uh, some guitars and things that you're just like, no, you're my baby. But for the most part, I've been really lucky that my, my gear has stuck with me for a long time. I have a an Art Luthery guitar that I've had... My very first guitar. Oh. That... Oh, she's, she's kind of terribly ugly now, but <laughs> she's my buddy. So I would be heartbroken if she went away. So. I, yeah, one of my, I have an acoustic on the wall, it's from a, I don't even know if the place is in existence anymore in San Diego, it was called Freedom Guitars, Freedom and inside the F hole, there's a sticker that says Freedom Guitars, I think they make them there, but not, not like Luthier make them, mm-hmm. they assemble them there, but it was all, you know, it was 88 bucks back in the, you know, 90s, and it's what I had to spend, mm-hmm. and that, my whole first album was written on that thing and, and recorded. But it's, you know, compared to the Ibanez I have up there now, it's it's a wood plank as opposed yeah. to, you know. Oh, see this one? But I would never get rid of it. For recording, it's not good for live at all. Like, they had to mic me up. I, I didn't know anything about acoustic electric. I was just like, right. I want that one. It's pretty. It's you know? pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl inlay yeah. will not give you tone. <laughs> no, but this one, like, it, there's no cellulose finish on it. It's, mm. it's all cedar, 100%, with rosewood fretboard. And she Cedar. just sounds incredible, but not live. Not as not as like a live. Yeah, she's she's a studio baby. She, you mic her up and mm. you filter her out. She's for she, the promo pics. Yes, 
She sounds amazing. Yeah. She's actually handling for all my things. Oh, so. there you go. Uh, did you bring the tailor today? I did. Excellent. I it's did. Let's hear that. Um, last question. Yeah. You made it. Um, let's pretend we're talking to new musicians. Okay. Especially new singer-songwriters. Okay. I'm not going to ask for maintenance tips because it's all the same. You know, mm -hmm. clean your strings and change your strings and blah, blah, blah. What, what is one thing you wish someone had told you when you were starting out? Gosh. So many things. Yeah. So many things. Tell them. Gosh, for somebody <laughs> new, um, you got to be doing this for the right reasons. You have to know that it's about you. It's about what is inside of you. It doesn't matter what anybody else is going to tell you because everyone's going to have an opinion. You have to be strong enough inside yourself to know yourself enough to say, this is what I'm doing. This is my passion. I love it. And I am good at it. Tell yourself you are good enough mm -hmm. because that's, that's all it takes. Everything else will kind of fall into place if you will allow yourself to be good enough. That's actually really important. That is, no one's ever said that. So thank you. It is, it's really important to, you know, not only believe in yourself, but to remind yourself that if one person says, hey, that was really good, then believe them. I, I've done that. I'm sure you had, I've had that moment of just, you know, where you're like, oh, thanks. But really inside, you're like, oh, I messed up this one chord mm -hmm. and all that. It's, you know, none of us are getting out alive. Just, just believe in yourself and do, go for it and do the best you can. So, well, cool. Um, do you have any questions? I don't think I do. I think this has been awesome. Thank you. Thank My you very much. Uh, you, thank you very much for watching and stick around. We're going to get Ruth up in front of the guitar wall in room six. And here's some tunes. Uh, how, how many tunes do you plan on doing? I'm going to do one for you. Okay, today, cool. Since we got Super Bowl coming up and yes. I've got food to be prepared. Yep. And... There you go. Cool. So stick around and we'll see you up in uh, room six. Say bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Page, read 
a note, never rise, that's right. And don't be a fool. I only bite a little bit all the time. I want to thank Ruth Ann Sharp for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to know more about what Ruth Ann is up to, click here. If you want to subscribe to this channel, please click down here. Don't forget to ring the bell. Um, other than that, I hope your team wins today. And if not, sorry. But thanks again for watching. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye. Bye, everybody. I had a great time.